commercial, it's very obvious it's a pickup of the old of the old commercial that she was doing with Wendy's. And from a strictly business standpoint, it's uh, I guess it's it makes sense that she was let go. I think she's an excellent spokesperson. I think they should have kept her on there. With what the television has done today with advertising and all, it was, it was a very uh, terrific gimmick. Well, Clara Peller won't be going hungry. Her agents say there have been dozens of offers from nationally known companies who want her to do for them what she did for Wendy's, namely, bring home the bacon. David Stewart, WGN News. Lines of Cub fans packing Wave London Sheffield waiting for hours to enter the bleacher gate at Wrigley Field. Well, that's probably a scene out of the past as a 48-year-old tradition ends. The Cubs, you see, have announced that bleacher seats will now be available in advance. The bleachers have always been sold first come, first serve basis on the day of the Thank game. You very much. Cubs fans today took the news in stride. The suburbs and, um, and we don't usually do that. We buy tickets uh, through the mail or for them ahead of time. So it didn't, doesn't really affect us. Do you think it's going to change the character of the people who sit in the bleachers or not? Or change the kind of people who come? The characters that sit in the bleachers, yeah, that's more like it. <laughs> characters indeed. Anyway, Cubs ticket manager Frank Maloney says there were some security problems last season when the fans camped outside Wrigley Field waiting for the ticket office to open up. Well, the Cubs had a winning day today in Mesa, Arizona. They beat out the Angels. But it was a close one, though, as was the Sox game against Pittsburgh. And our Dan Rowan will have a full report when we come back. In 18th century America, life was different. It still is. Come back in time to colonial Williamsburg. Come taste the different foods. Hear the different sounds. Smell the different smells. Meet the different people. There's so much to do in Colonial Williamsburg, an entire 18th century city restored to life. You'll walk the very ground where great leaders once met and great events took place. For a different way to spend your vacation, travel to a different time. Come to Colonial Williamsburg where 18th century America lives. Sports Tonight is being brought to you by Handy Andy Home Improvement Centers. When you're all thumbs, Handy Andy is all help. Well, baseball's opening day is not too far away, but meanwhile, we have the uh, lingering basketball scores to wait. Seems like a long season, doesn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we're almost finished, so okay, good. bear with us, Larry. We're halfway to the Final Four tonight. Georgetown and Memphis State punched a couple of tickets to Lexington today. The Hoyas knocked off Georgia Tech to win the East Regional. Memphis held off Oklahoma to win the Midwest. Georgetown really had to struggle against Georgia Tech today. John Sally would not be denied against Pat Ewing in the early going. Three-point play here. And Dwayne Farrell got to the boards against Patrick, too. In fact, Ewing missed 10 minutes of the second half with foul trouble. And the Hoyas mascot smelled something a little fishy out here. But when Patrick was in there, things like this happened. And Georgetown built up an eight-point first-half lead. Mark Price did not have the game today. He had against Illinois Thursday, but he helped get Tech back into a 29-all tie at halftime. Second half, Ewing went to the bench early with those four fouls, and Sally walked right on in. Tech pulled ahead by four. But Ralph Dalton saved the day for the Hoyas in relief of Ewing. Great offensive rebounding. Georgetown back in front by two. They got the ball back. They spread out the offense. Bill Martin on the baseline. Four-point lead with six minutes to play. It alternated between a two- and a four-point lead the rest of the way. Price was only three out of 16, but this one made it 56-54. However, the Hoyas scored the last four points. This closed it out. After the Price miss, Horace Brodnax put it down. And Georgetown had put down Georgia Tech. 60-54 at the finish, and the Hoyas are but two victories away 
from their second straight national championship. They may have to meet Memphis State in the championship game. The Tigers knocked out Oklahoma and Wayman Tisdale this afternoon in Dallas. Great matchup with Tisdale and Keith Lee of Memphis. But they weren't the only ones out there. Anthony Bowie shot the lights out early for Oklahoma, and they went up 21-14. Billy Tubbs liked what he saw. But then Lee took over for Memphis State. You get him down low, and it's all over. The Tigers led by three. But to end the half, here comes Tisdale. On the alley-oop, he jammed it. He drew Lee's third foul. And like the other game, this one was tied at halftime, 31-31. But Memphis State took over in the second half, though not by much. William Bedford from on high. Four-point lead for Dana Kirk and the Tigers. Then Darrell Kennedy made a big play for Oklahoma to cut it to two. And it was pins and needles the rest of the way. Memphis was up only by two points. And late going, too, you can see the clock when Andre Turner went coast to coast to make it 61-57 in the final half minute. But Turner let the Sooners back in when he missed this one and one in the final seconds. Tisdale got the rebound. Bowie's going to come up shooting for the tie from about 22 feet, but it's off the back iron. And Memphis State heads to the final four, 63-61 to over Oklahoma. Tomorrow, two of these four teams will join Memphis State and Georgetown. The ACC against the Big East in both games. North Carolina and Villanova in the Southeast and St. John's against North Carolina State out in the West. High school hoops, you saw it on Channel 9 tonight. The longest championship game ever ended after two overtimes when Mount Carmel's Derek Boyd hit a buzzer jumper to beat Springfield Lanfear, the first time the Catholic League has ever won a state championship. Now, Mount Carmel had an eight-point lead after three, and the caravan was doing pretty well in the fourth, too, when they got out on the break, and James Farr hit one. But Lanfear brought it back with All-Stater Ed Horton. Inbounds play, alley-oop, and it was back to a two-point game. Then when Horton picked up a loose ball and laid it in off the, right off the wood right here, we were tied at 44 and headed for overtime. No scoring in the first extra three minutes. The second overtime came down to this. Two seconds left, Derek Boyd, the shot that ended the boys' high school basketball season in Illinois. Mount Carmel, the double-A state champ for 1985. Final score again, 46-44 in double overtime. Third place game tonight goes to Homewood Flossmoor, 56-46 over Cahokia. The Sting playing Las Vegas tonight out in Vegas, and they have just fallen behind. Still in the first half, uh, late second quarter, in fact, they trail 1-0 to Las Vegas. Exhibition baseball today, Mark Hill squeezed home Jose Castro with a game winner. In the bottom of the ninth inning, the White Sox beat Pittsburgh 2-1. They've won nine of their last 11 and now stand 12-5 for the spring. So do the Cubs after beating the California Angels today in Mesa. Big comeback in the seventh inning. Sean Dunstan's RBI single to center cut the Angels' lead to a single run at 3-2. to two. Later on, Billy Hatcher would come through. All this off Tommy John, another RBI single, kind of a dinker to right field. Uh, John trying to make it one more season with the Angels, not doing so well today. Then Dave Owen stepped in, and he drilled a single to left field. The third consecutive RBI single for the Cubs. Chico Walker scored from second. They had a 4-3 lead after seven. But California tied it up in the ninth and set the stage for this. Ground ball to shortstop off Walker's bat right through their shortstop. Gary Woods came on in with a winning run. Cubs beat the Angels 5-4. They play the Padres tomorrow right here on Channel 9. Pro golfers are playing for a $171,000 first prize this week, and where else but in Las Vegas. Tom Watson has a one-shot lead there with 18 holes left. The bad news for him, he had a three-shot lead when the day started. He made a par here at 17, shot par for the day at 71. Still hanging on just one shot behind is Billy Glasson, who is playing here at the par 5 18th hole. In three seasons, he has never finished higher than fifth, but this could be the week for him. Knocked it on the green in birdie range. His putt just stayed on the lip, and Billy Glasson stayed one shot behind Tom Watson at the Las Vegas Invitational. And in the featured race out at Sportsman's today, I hate to say it, but I picked it, the $50,000 Jack R. Johnston Memorial. Phil George F. brings him on into the water. Here they come, spinning out of the turn. Patchison, driving has it a length and a half. Energetic King to the outside, second. Coming on, spear card down the stretch. Patchison has a two and a half length lead. Energetic King, second. Spear card, a late move, third. Rubens Art, fourth. But it's Patchison, start to finish. Patchison by two and a quarter. Energetic King, second. Spear card, third. The Johnston Memorial from Sportsman. Larry wanted to know if I picked the race, why am I still here? That's right. It only paid 11.20 to win. Oh wow! <laughs> we don't bet much. The Bulls in <laughs> okay. Dallas coming up at 11 o'clock okay. on tape delay. I yeah. saw it come in, 
Great game. He won't tell you who won, but you'll oh, enjoy you it. I'll guarantee you, you that. You know that also, of course. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dan. A high political profile often goes hand in hand with a campaign drive. And Joel Weissman says that's exactly what's happening with an Illinois Republican in Washington, D.C. Here's Joel's commentary. Maybe you haven't noticed, but you're seeing an awful lot more lately of Senator Alan Dixon. That's because Dixon's profile is rising as he nears his re-election year, 1986. So we see Dixon promising things like tax amnesty programs and becoming the champion of farm interests and worrying about badly operating defense systems. And we don't hear much rebuttal, especially from Republicans in Illinois. When Jim Thompson speaks, there's always a ton of reaction from Democrat Attorney General Neil Hartigan. That's because he's Thompson's likely opponent in the upcoming governor's race. But when Dixon talks, there's no Republican that we can really look to for reaction or rebuttal. The reason is no Republican has yet surfaced, if any exists, who is anxious to oppose the senator. That's because the senator's popularity in several statewide runs has been nothing short of awesome. Yet the absence of Republican challengers shows the general disarray of the GOP here. While the lack of people standing in line to oppose Dixon specifically is somewhat understandable, there are several other vulnerable Democrats at the local and state levels. Take the mayor of Chicago, for example. But to date, there's no real Republican who surfaced to challenge Mayor Washington either. In short, the GOP policy of free rides on the local level shows no sign of abating. And now, in the upcoming U.S. Senate race and other upcoming elections, it seems to actually be spreading to the state level. It's something the state's leading Republican, Jim Thompson, and the nation's leading Republican, Ronald Reagan, ought to be very concerned about. But if they are, their concern hasn't surfaced either. I'm Joel Wiseman. Well, it was a soggy, foggy, kind of yucky day for Chicagoans who had to contend with the rain and drizzle on and off all afternoon. Temperatures stayed in the 40s, but the threat of snow is still with us. Tom Skilling says just a little bit of the fluff may be mixed with rain by late tonight. And tomorrow, the winds, he says, will pick up. So we're going to get his report coming right up. Your city like you've never seen before. Experience Here's Chicago at the historic Chicago Water Tower. Enter the next decade. The Audi 5000S. It has become America's fastest selling European sedan. And now, you can lease an Audi 5000S for $298 a month. Why do 5 million readers love USA Today? USA Today News. USA Today is clear. USA Today Money. USA Today is concise. USA Today Sports. USA, USA Today, Today is complete. complete. USA Today Life. USA Today is classy. The nation's most interesting, most colorful, most modern newspaper and growing every day. USA Today, the newspaper of tomorrow is here today. USA Today is wonderful. Bob, you're Tom. <laughs> well, Tom, I guess uh, we're going to get it straight from you now, huh? Well, that's right, Bob. No, and, we're back uh, to me. We... Well, Tom's going to give us the, uh, the forecast. We had a bit of uh, uh, some forecast for some snow earlier today, but yeah. let's find out what happened to it. Yeah, well, it's, it's going north, Bob. Uh, now, I know you're disappointed. You had your snow shovel in the back of the car and so forth. A lot of folks did. But it's true. Tonight, we have a storm system passing to the north of us. Actually, the storm right now sits out here in uh, north-central Illinois. We can show that to you. The storm has been tracking out of Iowa across the northern part of the state, and it'll go right over the north edge of the city. That means that the heaviest snow, maybe one to three inches of it, will fall through central Wisconsin, uh, just north of the Milwaukee area, towards Sheboygan and Oshkosh and areas like that. Here is the precipitation shield. We've got some rain showers coming in. Here's the snow up to the north. And you can see the comma-shaped configuration of this big storm that's producing all the moisture. In fact, there's a new wave of showers coming at us, as you can see on the Marseilles National Weather Service radar, now approaching Rockford and down to about Moline. 
this is the leading edge of some cooler air that's going to come in here and it looks like uh, as that cooler air comes in we're going to get pretty windy the storm is right here tonight one front has gone through and winds which were easterly all day and now shifted around to the southwest and they're really blowing we've got quite a jet stream the lower extent of which reaches down to the ground and it's those strong winds that are blowing in at 20 and 30 miles an hour from Iowa and Missouri tonight now the second front goes through tomorrow so after a gusty southwest wind in the morning then the northeast winds and cooler temperatures for tomorrow but that's uh, only part of the story we've got some much warmer air perhaps the warmest day of the season coming as we get to next week but this is really kind of neat this is a satellite animation of the weather movement and you'll see the high altitude winds coming in and spinning the clouds around the jet stream these heaviest clouds have been staying to the north of us as you can see in this weather depiction since about midnight right up to airtime and it looks like this is the band of heaviest snow that will pass again to the north of the Chicago area now the temperature readings over the next couple of days are going to stay on the, the cool side at least for tomorrow and Monday but then we're going to warm up quite dramatically and in fact on this animation you can see why there's a second storm moving in on the west coast and this is pulling all kinds of very mild air across the Rocky Mountain chain in fact uh, the temperature readings during the day tomorrow may be up to the 70s as far north as Colorado right now it's 28 uh, that's the wind chill winds are southwest at 12 we have 11 hundredths of an inch of rain today and a high of 44 degrees and tonight uh, these don't look very snow like do they 40 degree temperature readings across the Chicago area 42 at O'Hare DuPage and Midway and 44 at the lakefront now watch the temperatures change over the next two days from 30s here tomorrow 40s to the west and here's this ridge of 60s and 70s out to the west of us the 60s spread into Iowa by Monday and up all the way to South Dakota with 70s and even some 80s in the eastern Colorado that's the warm air that will produce perhaps our warmest day of the year by Tuesday so quite a change and that's uh, pretty typical of spring with 37 tomorrow warming to 46 Monday pretty cool a little below normal then up to 64 with showers and thunderstorms later in the day on Tuesday dropping us back a little bit the second half of the uh, coming week all right here's the here are the specifics of our forecast now for the Chicago area and for tonight rainy spells and windy there may be some mixed wet snow toward morning but most of that is going up to the north of us passing to the north the snow will mix in in northern suburbs and spread southward toward morning with lows down to 33 and west northwest winds by morning 12 to 26. tomorrow a windy colder day some passing rain and snow showers from time to time we may even get a peak at the sun with a high of 37 west northwest winds in the morning shift northeast at 12 to 24 in the afternoon then cloudy and colder with a few flurries tomorrow night a low of 28 and during the day on Monday, it looks like uh, some sun will finally come through the clouds by afternoon, a little bit warmer, with a 45 degree reading, but cooler than that with northeast winds near the lake. And then partly sunny and windy, and 65 is a very real possibility by Tuesday, Bob, on the front edge of a, of a storm. So well, we're, we're so warm anyway, it's, it's unlikely we'd get much accumulation of No, you're snow. right. The ground has, uh, has pretty well frozen, so uh, even if you had gotten snow in any great quantity, it probably wouldn't stick on anything but the grassy surfaces. That's still a possibility in some of the north suburban areas, but I think most of the snow will be up in Wisconsin and Michigan. Okay, Tom. Thank you very much. Well, it's the cat's meow, and it opened tonight. We'll have that story in just a moment. I could have moved in with the kids or moved into one of those retirement hotels, but the Lincoln Park retirement apartments are like a breath of fresh air. This could be your own luxury apartment with maid service and round-the-clock security. There's a chef and staff to serve you breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. This and a lot more is included in your reasonable rent. There's even a complete geriatric medical facility right here in the building. The Lincoln Park Retirement Apartments. There's no other place like it in America. Your special secret recipe deserves the